now that we're in the Arctic, we should probably add some snow to this scene. So in a new scene, I'll right click and add a particle system. And we want this to be in world space, not inside of the camera. So we'll drag this emitter outside of this device. So now it's in the world. If we kept it in the device, when we rotate this around, the particles would kind of lock to it. And we want that not to be the case. We want them to be out in the world. I'll rename this to snow. And I'll just pull it up above the scene. And under spray angle, I'll delete this little variance here. And right now it's going up in the Y. So if we spin it around the X axis, 180 degrees, now it's falling downward. And we'll change the emitter type to ring. And set this to two. And to better see the ring, let's increase the birth rate to, let's say 500 just temporarily. So looking at it, you might notice out here on the edges, the particles are pretty spaced out, and yet in the center, it's really dense. There's a lot going on here because of the way the ring emitter works. So instead of using a ring, for this case, I think a plane would be better. We'll increase this to two by two. Now you can see out here and in the center, everything is distributed a little bit more evenly. Maybe I'll increase these to 2.5 each, just to give it a little bit more space. And because snowflakes fall quite slowly, the lifespan is gonna have to be pretty long. Let's try 20 seconds to start. And I'll turn down the birth rate just so there's not too many particles in the scene. When the filter starts, we want snow to already be in the scene. So we'll turn on warm up and set it to 10 seconds. So now we're getting a pretty decent speed here. It looks like they're going a little bit further than the ground, so we can turn the lifespan down to 10. And I'll just restart so we can see that effect. That looks pretty good, pretty close to the ground. Now the speed, I believe, is looking pretty good. That variance of 40% feels pretty realistic. For the tilt, you can see they're all slightly tilted where the left is lower. I'm just gonna remove that tilt and then instead set a randomness to it. Because this only sets the initial rotation, I'm just gonna set this to 999. That way they're totally randomized when they get built. And under spin, I also want some randomness here. So let's try 360. Now you can see some of them are spinning somewhat quickly. Others are pretty slow. Now let's add a material to this so they don't look like checkerboards. Double click that and then double click the name to rename it to Matt Snow. Change it to flat so the lights don't matter. And for the texture, we're actually gonna use three different possible options. So let's click this little dot here. That opens a patch editor. And I'll right click and add a picker UI in here. I'll make that visible. And I have three snowflakes I'll drag in. And so each of these will be their own snowflake texture. So I'm setting the three textures here to these three images. And after resetting, you can see those appear here. And I can select them and you can see that little ring around them changes. So now all I have to do is drag this selected texture into the diffuse of this material. And then there we go. We have any of these three textures added into this material. So as I click through these, you can see the material changes. And this isn't something you would necessarily add into a filter. But I just wanted to show how easily you can use this picker UI to change different variables in your filter. So the blue snowflakes look a little silly. I'll switch it over to this white one. 
And to make sure this is working, I can click and drag in here. And you can see as the camera's moving around, you can see it in here, the snowflakes are being locked to the world. And so if I was holding my camera and spinning around, those snowflakes would move in real space rather than in camera space. And this is probably too many particles for the average phone to handle very well. So I'll select this object again and turn the birth rate down to something a little bit more manageable. That is the one drawback of using this kind of technique with particles, is that most of the particles you generate won't actually be seen by the camera at the same time. And so the computer is doing a lot more work calculating all these particles, even though you're only seeing what's in front up here. And if you wanted to set it up where the snowflakes behind you didn't appear in front of you, like this one here, you would just add segmentation to a canvas, to a rectangle, and then that way your face would be rendered on here, but then this area around your face would be transparent, and so you'd be able to see these particles behind you, but they wouldn't be in front of your face.